Shabbat Shalom, everyone. God bless you and welcome to the uh, Shabbat meeting of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. We want to ask the Lord to bless this session together. We are studying the book of uh, Ecclesiastes uh, to help us along the way to see the, the counsel that we have uh, from the Lord through uh, Shlomo uh, that he gave to Israel uh, some years ago, which we as believers can learn today so much from the uh, book of Kohelet, the book of Ecclesiastes. So, Abba, our Father, we will ask your blessing upon the ministry of your word as we read from Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, uh, chapter 4. We ask that you will bless it, for we ask it for your glory in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So please, uh, dear uh, friends, dear brothers and sisters, turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. And we are here uh, now in this uh, session. We are dealing with the uh, fourth uh, chapter. We have already covered uh, the first seven or eight verses of this uh, chapter. And I just want to read from verse, actually from verse 7 to verse 16, to the end of the chapter. And so please follow me as I'm reading the text. And so Shlomo, Solomon, continued to give this counsel to Israel by saying to them in verse 7, he says, Then I returned and saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone and there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor, neither is his eyes satisfied with riches, neither says he, for whom do I labor and uh, bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity, yea, it is a sore travail. Verse 9, two, Shlomo continued to say, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And notice that a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished, for out of a prison he cometh to reign, where is also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. Verse 15, I considered, all the living which walk under the sun with the second child that shall stand up in his stead, there is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of a spirit. And so here I'm concluding here with the last verse of uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter uh, 4. So, beloved brothers and sisters, because we uh, minister the, the, the Word of God in this um, book of Ecclesiastes and any book, because we take some time between one message and another, time is passing by and we have an inclination to, uh, you might say, not to remember the theme and the subject of every book that we learn uh, from the Word of God and really the the subject here in the book of Ecclesiastes, 
Kohelet in Hebrew is really the theme of the importance of having God in our lives here in this world under the sun. And to emphasize specifically that it is not only applying to the unbelieving world. The unbelieving world needs, first of all, to turn to God for salvation through the person of the Lord Jesus, the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. But it is specifically speaking to those who are already belong to God, as Shlomo was speaking to Israel. He is called Kohelet, the gatherer of the Ecclesia of the Assembly of Israel, and he shared with them the importance of having God in their life because he himself had experienced a departure from God, and he learned and he saw that it is there's no value here in this world without to have God in one's life. Not only for the unbelievers now, but even for believers. When believers are walking away from the Lord, not having the Lord Jesus, the Lord Yeshua as the one that lead them and guide them, they appear to be like the unregenerated world. And that's why it is essential for believers to realize that we need God in our day-by-day living. God's people need to walk with the Lord. And that's why the Lord uh, uh, Jesus the Messiah said, if you remember in uh, uh, John chapter 15, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Uh, uh, he said to them, abide in the vine, because without me ye can do nothing. So we are all called, whether Israel historically or whether we believers today, we are all called to abide close to our God. And so when we are now finding ourselves in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, a Kohelet, this is Shlomo HaMelech, the King Solomon, is emphasizing the need of having relationship with one another and relationship with the Lord. The whole fourth chapter emphasizes the need of relationship in this world, in this life, under the sun, relationship that must be built by submissiveness to the Lord. You remember that we have already read that God said in Genesis, in the beginning, in chapter 1 and chapter 2, he said, it is not good that a man shall be alone. I will make him a helpmate. And so God always wishes and desires that uh, we will have help meet. We will have a help with one another. We will have marriage, a healthy marriage, husbands and wives, but also friendship and fellowship among God's people and to seek to build relationship with one another. But sadly, when Shlomo looks around and you notice that he used the word here, uh, uh, I considered. Notice that, chapter 4, verse 1. And I turned and considered. You notice that? He's mentioning this also in verse 7. He said, Then I returned and I saw. And then later on in verse 15, he said once again, I consider. In other words, Shlomo used the Hebrew word ra'iti, it's really the va'ere, what we have in verse 1 and what we have in verse 8 and what we have in verse 15, ra'iti, ere. In other words, he said, I looked around with mine eyes and I observed to see what's going on here around me in my life. And he's looking around and he sees three sad things that are going in the world at large, but even among his own people. You see, three sad things. We have covered two of them. The first thing that he saw is verses 1 to 3. Shlomo saw the sad oppressions that happen to men here under the sun. We have covered that, beloved brothers and sisters, where he saw, he pointed to the sorrow that oppression brings here in this world under the sun when one does not treat another in the right way. Sad oppression. You remember what he said? He said in verse 1, And I return and I consider, I saw 
all the oppression that are done under the sun. And then he said, And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they that had no comforter. And on the other side, what did he saw? The oppressors, there was power, and they had, a, a, and, and the oppressed one didn't have any comforter. So, what does he see? The said, Oppress, oppression that is going here in this world. And that teaches us the lesson that we need to be those who relieve oppression, relieve the oppressed. And that's what he's emphasizing here. If we are going to relieve the oppressed, we are called to help one another, to be builders, to be, to be those that do not inflict upon one another oppression. The rich oppress the poor, the powerful oppress the weak, the strong one oppress the weak, and so on. And, and one nation oppress another, and one group of people oppress another, one person oppress another in relationship, and we are called to be different. Don't oppress one another. Make sure that you are seeking for harmony to be builders here in this world, have relationship here in this world under the sun among God's people. Remember what we have studied in the book of Habakkuk, in Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk had the dilemma and he says, God, I don't understand how come the unrighteous treat wrongly the righteous. It is not right. And God came with an answer because judgment have come when the unrighteous oppressed the, uh, the righteous and God came with an answer, with a judgment. Secondly, we have already covered, beloved brothers and sisters, in these next verses, verses 4, 5, and 6, that there was not only the sad oppression here under the sun, but secondly, there was a sad envying here that happened under the sun, here in this world, in a world at large and among God's people. And we have already emphasized the fact that there is a difference between envy and jealousy. In the Hebrew word is only one word, the word is kina. But in the Eng in the Greek you have the two Greek word that is a, a psonos, psonos and zelos, and are translated into the two English words envy and jealousy. And we have already emphasized the truth that uh, here he is specifically speaking about envy. One is envying another, not so much jealousy, because jealousy is somewhat different. Envy, it is to bear a grudge towards someone due to coveting what that person has. In other words, a, a envy is to long for something that someone else has and it's not mine. On the other hand, jealousy, to be jealous of uh, being replaced by someone else, uh, it means to be watchful, to be zealous, expecting complete devotion. So God is a jealous God, as we have already emphasized, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5, Exodus th chapter 34 and verse 14, God is a jealous God. God is jealous of his own people. He wants his people to belong to him. Practically, he was a zealous of Israel, the nation. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2 that he had this godly a jealousy that he has espoused the assembly with a godly zealousy for the Messiah, for Christ. But to be envy is altogether another thing. It's to bear a grudge towards someone due to coveting what that person has or enjoy, and I want to have it for myself. It is the longing for something that really someone else has, and it's not belong to me. And that is what the, uh, the Kohelet, the king of Israel, is speaking about here. What does he see in verses 4 to 6? He see the sad envying that happened here under the sun. 
And you remember we read this, verse 4, and I consider all the travail and every right work. And it says here that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and, and vexation of spirit. And we covered these verses, beloved brothers and sisters, verses 4, 5, and 6. But we also continued, and we spoke a little bit in verses 7 all the way to verse 12. This is the third point that Shlomo is is emphasizing here in this uh, interesting fourth chapter of Kohelet, of Ecclesiastes. What does he share with us here? The third important lesson here, the sad isolation and sad separation and sad divisions that is also happening here under the sun in this world, even, and I'm emphasizing this especially among God's people. Of course, in general, separation, divisions happen in the whole world. Nations are separated from others. You see, It is one thing to be separated unto God from evil. And that is commanded by the scripture. But it is another thing to be separating from one another out of pride and arrogance and self-will, thinking that one is better than the other. That is sin. That is that which is not pleasing to the Lord. And so you remember... We are emphasizing here the need for harmony, the the need for unity, the need for relationship. And you will notice in verses 7 and 8, which we began to cover, Solomon sees the loneliness of of a a person with no one even to uh, to care for him and to continue his, uh, you might say, that he can leave to him some uh, possession. But you notice what what happened. He's emphasizing in verses 7, and eight, the, the, the fact that uh, it says in verse 7, Then I returned and I saw the vanity under the sun. Notice that, vanity under the sun. There is one alone. And there is not a second. In other words, someone sometimes is so occupied with himself or with herself that they are so selfish and they are so busy and occupied for themselves. They don't take the time to build the relationship uh, to uh, to recognize that they are they are called to be to have harmony and 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 unity and relationship with others. So what they do, there is one alone and there is not a second. Yeah. He has neither a child nor a brother, yet there is no end to his labor. He's working or she's working and working and laboring, but they don't have anyone, any family ties, any relationship that they can hand over the blessing that God had given to them. It says in verse 8b, Neither is his eyes satisfied with riches, neither uh, saith he, For whom do I labor and, and, and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity, yea, it is a sore travail. In other words, to whom will I uh, do? Uh, who do I work for? Those of us that are parents uh, or husband and wife know very well that we love our family, our wives and our husband and our children, and we do everything in order to be a blessing to them. Because God has said that in order that there will be a desire to be a blessing to your family, but also to God's people, beloved brothers and sisters. You see, this is exactly what Shlomo is saying to Israel. He's saying to them, Israel... You are called to be a blessing to one another. And when there was a division among the nation, it it hurt God when the people of God are separated and there is no harmony. In the same thing it is with the assembly, the church today, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. In fact, I would like you to turn with me, please, for a moment to John chapter 17, before Yeshua died on a shameful tree. Notice what he said in John chapter 17, Yohanan chapter 17. This is this uh, pr- high priestly prayer as it often is being called. Notice what the Lord Yeshua the Messiah there in the city of Jerusalem is just about to go to the 
cross, to the Roman cross, and he's praying on the way from the uh, upper room in Yerushalayim to the garden of Gatshmanim, and he's praying in verse 20 to his father, and he says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, echad, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, the day also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hadst sent me. In verse 22 he said, And the glory which thou gavest me I give unto them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, and that they may be made perfect, in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. In other words, beloved brothers and sisters, the prayer of Yeshua HaMashiach on the way to the garden of Gatshmanim, Gethsemane, he was asking his Abba, praying and saying, Abba, I wish that those you, that you have given to me may be one. And what he mean by that, that they may be one practically. You see, all God's people are one positionally. But sadly, God's people are not one practically. And that is evident. It was evident in our people Israel's history. And it is evident in the, uh, in the church in a practical way, sadly. And that's what uh, uh, um, uh, Shlomo is emphasizing in these verses when he says in verses 7 and 8, you see, he sees the loneliness that happening here in this world. Sometimes of this loneliness happened because of our own fault. Sometimes it happened because we are not sensitive to one another. But that loneliness is happening because many times we are selfish. And like in this person here, if this person is laboring and laboring and not taking the time, his eyes is not satisfied or her eyes is not satisfied with all the wealth that they have. And they don't think that all the labor and the work that they do, that it is essential to build a relationship with another. And not only to be occupied with themselves. In other words, the theme, actually, the theme of the book of Philippians is others. Others. And we have a problem with that, isn't it? In fact, we need one another in marriage. We need one another in family relationship. We need one another collectively as a, it's an assembly, a congregation, kehilah. We need one another. We need one another in every area of our lives. Obviously, we can't enjoy one another because uh, a, a, a time with the world, of course, because the unbelieving world do not accept the Mashiach. And therefore, there is a natural separation, even though we, we, we are called to be a blessing to the world. But when it happened among the people of God, under the sun, here on earth, that is what grieving God and making, you might say, and saddening the hearts of many. And, and beloved brothers and sisters, it is easy to point to one another and to say it's because of him, because of her, because of them. And the call here is to search our own hearts, to see where am I individually in the whole uh, issue here. But notice now, as we continue here, in verses 9 to verse 12. You notice what the Shlomo is saying. He's actually saying here uh, five points that he's saying here in these, in these verses. Very interesting. Notice he's using this expression here uh, in, in these verses. In fact, let me read these verses, verses 9 to verse 12. Uh, uh, Shlomo is saying, two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, and for he has not another to help him up. Verse 11, if two lay together, then they have heat. 
But how can one be warmed alone? Verse 12, he says, If one prevail against him, too shall we stand him. And you notice how he concludes here at the end of verse 12, in a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now notice that. He is saying to us a few things that are very, very important. In verse 9, he says, Two are better than one. In other words, two are essential to work together. In verse 10, two are better than one because two are better when they walk together. In verse 11, two are better than one. Why? Because two are better to warm up together. In verse 12a, two are better than one because two are able to withstand better together. And then in verse 12b, he says, three are even better than two. Let me repeat it. Two are better than one when they walk together, when they work together. Two are better than one when they walk together. Two are better than one when they warm together. Two are better than one when they withstand together. And three are better than two. Now let's just read a few uh, verses in connection with this, beloved brothers and sisters. Notice again verse, verse 9, he says, two are better than one. In Hebrew, it says, Tovim hashnaim min ha'echad. When we are working together, notice he continues in verse 9, he says, they have a good reward for their labor. In other words, when we labor, when we work together, we are rewarded when we enjoy one another and work together, there is a better reward. We are strong together. I remember hearing the story of the uh, of a father who gathered his sons together, and he uh, read to them the very famous psalm that we often sing in Hebrew, and we sing in Israel. He nematov umanaim shevet achim gam yachad. Psalm one thirty three and verse one. Behold how good. And how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And that father gathered his family together, he gathered his children together, and he said to them, give me a stick. So they brought him a stick, and he says, try to break it. And one of his sons took that one stick, and quickly he was able to break that stick. So he asked him, now bring me two sticks. And he put them together, he tied them together, and he asked one of the other sons, let's see if you can break that. And so the son tried, and sure enough, he broke the two sticks together. So he told them, well, let's take a third one, and he brought a third stick, and they had three sticks now together. He tied them together, and he gave it to the third son or daughter. And he says, let's try if you can break that. And sure enough, they, with all the strength that they had, they could break that the three together, and then they had the fourth one and the fifth one, and there's a point of time that they could never any longer break the whole group of sticks together. In other words, the lesson is that the more together with harmony that we are, we are not going to be broken, and we can we can work together and and walk together and warm together and we stand together. Anything that happened here in the life of God's people, unity it is essential uh, among the people of God, and it will produce a, a, a reward when we are working together, and so. We read here, beloved brothers and sisters, here, notice that, again, I'm reading uh, Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, Shlomo is speaking, and he's saying to Israel, two are better than one. Why, Shlomo, why they are better than one? Because, he said, he gives us the reason, working together, he said, they have a good reward for their labor. In fact, if you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 
3 for a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the apostle Shaul Paul said to the Corinthian uh, believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, listen to this in verse uh, 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9, he said, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. You see, God's people are laborers together and God is going to reward his people, beloved brothers and sisters. And therefore, there is reward when we work together. It reminds me also, you remember when the very king, Shlomo, because he disobeyed the Lord. Remember all these lessons that we are learning, he is teaching Israel after he had the experience of departing from the Lord, having three, uh, 700 wives, 300 concubines, having idols uh, and altars and, and all kind of uh, um, uh, uh, places for worship for all his wives, and he turned away to other gods from the God of Israel. And now he is instructing Israel because he is showing to them how important it is to be one that is a... Uh, in harmony, but what happened? He lost the kingdom. His son, of course, Jehovah lost the kingdom, and Israel was divided. And Israel, as a divided nation, was fighting with one another, and ultimately, the northern kingdom, the ten tribes, were taken captive by the Assyrian in 721 BC. Later on, the southern kingdom, Yehuda, was taken captive by the Babylonian in 586 BC, and the temple was destroyed and burned. And here we have the Jewish people, a divided nation, a scattered nation, not a testimony to the world anymore, not a, not a, a nation that is giving a testimony to the world. Uh, uh, as God said that he, these people have I chosen that they may show forth my glory. But they failed. And God introduced the assembly until he will restore Israel. And you will notice it is the same thing with the church, with the assembly. The assembly, instead of being united and good testimony for the Lord, look at the last days in which we live in. There is a division and lack of working together, and there is no reward. And therefore, those that are uh, uh, separating themselves unto the Lord and seeking the mind of the Lord even need the grace from God to practice these things in a practical way, because that is what the Lord is called His own people to enjoy. And so, two are better than one when they work together. They will receive a reward. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. But even further, not only two are better than one when they work together, two are better than one when they walk. Now walk in harmony together. To walk together in a right path that is honoring to the Lord and is a blessing to one another when we walk together. We uh, honor the Lord and God receive the, the honor that he deserves from God's people. And that's why he's emphasizing, beloved brothers and sisters here, the need of walking together. And this is what the, the, the Lord often have challenged the nation of Israel when he sought from them to, uh, to walk in a way that is pleasing to him. I'm just looking for that verse uh, and I'll find it in a moment. Uh, if you turn with me to the prophecy of Amos and notice what we read in the prophecy of Amos, God said to Israel in Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? In other words, we have to learn to agree with one another. And of course, uh, we have to be careful. We cannot agree on everything. If uh, we cannot agree of anything that is not biblically found, doctrinally taught, but how is it possible to walk together if we do not agree? 
And so you notice, and I'm reading verse 10, uh, as it says here in verse 10, for if they fall, the one will be, will lift up his fellow. In other words, two are better than one from verse 9. Then verse 10, if they fall, uh, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another uh, to help him up. You remember what the apostle uh, Shaul Paul said in Galatians chapter 6? Let's just read this verse as well. Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 1, the apostle Shaul Paul said to the Galatian believers, he says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tested or tempted as well. Bear ye one another burden, for so you fulfill the law of Mashiach, the law of Christ, the law of the Messiah. In other words, two are better than one when they work together, and two are better than one when they walk together. Walking together and working together is essential. Again, we are emphasizing that uh, Shlomo is looking around and he see the, the separation, the isolation that exists here in this world under the sun. Bear in mind that when we will go to heaven, we will never anymore be separated from one another. The assembly will be, the church will be with the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, forever. When Christ, when the Messiah will come at his second coming, Israel will be a restored nation. You remember what we read in Jeremiah chapter 31. He will take these two sticks, one represent Israel, one represent Yehuda, and he will unite them together, and they will be one nation under the Mashiach Yeshua in the future day. But it is here and now under the sun as we live here in this world. Two are better than one when they work together. Two are better than one when they walk together. Verse uh, uh, 10 and verse 11. Two are better than one when they are warming up together. You know very well when... I remember when we were in the military, when we were in a cold, uh, a cold evening or cold night, we were kind of rubbing each other's hands and we were kind of getting heat this way. And we know very well in friendship and in relationship between husband and wife, and we know how wonderful it is even to uh, be together above the fire and to kind of warm our hands. And it's really encouraging. And the, the spiritual lesson is that we can warm each other's heart. When we are united, when we are together, you remember, beloved brothers and sisters, again, one more verse in the Brit HaKadashah in Luke chapter 24. You remember when the two that went down from Yerushalayim to Ameos, and then how the Lord Yeshua the Messiah appeared in the midst and he walked with them. And you remember what they said one to another after he revealed to them that he is indeed the Mashiach, that he is the promised Messiah. You remember we read here in verse 25 of Luke 24, Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Art not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And verse 27, he said, beginning with Moshe, and with all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I am the Messiah. I have to die. I will enter into my glory. I will return again, he said to them. Reading the, the Torah, Moses, the prophets, later on we read that they open also the, the writing, the Psalms. But you remember what they say to one another? Listen to this. It says here in verse 31 of Luke 24, And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight, and they said one to another, listen to this, they said, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened unto us 
the scriptures. You see, beloved brothers and sisters, the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, warmed the heart of these disciples who were discouraged. And every time when we are walking and working together, we can warm the hearts of one another by ministering to one another. And we can encourage one another with the word of God and in a practical way by leading one another closer to the Lord. Did not our heart was burning within us when he spoke to us by the way, when he opened unto us the scripture. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, Shlomo is looking around and he sees the condition that existing in the world under the sun. He is looking around and he sees the condition among his own people, Israel, and he says, we need to work together. We need to walk together. We need to warm each other's heart together. That is a needful thing among the people of God. There is a verse in Romans. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12 and verses 4 and 5. There the apostle Paul said to the Romans believers, chapter 12 and there verses 4 and 5. And I'm reading these verses. He says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have have not the same office or the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, in Mashiach. And everyone is member one of another, and we are called as the members of the body of the Messiah to warm each other's heart and to encourage each other to continue to follow the Lord. And again, I am reading, beloved brothers and sisters, in this chapter, we are called to walk together, verse 9. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. We are called to to work together, verse 9, to walk together in verse 10, to warm each other's heart in verse 11. But now notice in verse 12, The first part of verse 12, beloved brothers and sisters, we are called to also withstand the enemies of God's people together. Notice what he says in verse 12, in the first part of verse 12, he says, "If, if one prevail against him, two are better than one. Why? Because if one will prevail against one of them against him, Two shall withstand him. In other words, when we have an enemy, the desire on an ongoing basis to harm the people of God, when we are together, we are able to withstand against the enemies of God's people. We will be able to withstand against the enemies. Now turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, 11, notice that we read in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 and 11 concerning the enemy of God's people. In verse 10, Shaul Paul saying, finally, my brethren, be strong. Notice he's speaking to the brethren together. Oh yes, each one of them is individual, but he's speaking to the totality of the believers in the local assembly at Ephesus. And he said, finally, my brethren, collectively, together, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, here's the word, to stand or to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able, here's the word, to withstand, to withstand, in an evil day, and having done all to stand. And then it gives them all the information concerning the, the, the army of God that we need to put on. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, you can see how uh, uh, Shlomo, Hamelech, the king, 
of Israel is instructing the, his people, the Kehillah, that's why he's called Kohelet, because he is the gatherer of the Kehillah, of the assembly of Israel, and he is the one that giving instruction to them, looking what's going on here under the sun in this world that rejected God. And he's saying to them, we cannot do so. We cannot live life without God in our life. We who are already belong to him, we cannot just neglect to God to have in our life. We as believers in Yeshua the Messiah, we cannot just live life without the Lord Jesus the Messiah to become the center and the object of our life. Again, he said in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. And so now notice that as he concludes here in verse 12b, looking around and seeing the sad division, separation, and isolation here in this world, at the end of this whole, two are better than one when they are walking together. Two are better than one when they are working together. Two are better than one when they are warming together. Two are better than one when they withstand the enemies together. And then he continues and he says, even more, three is better than two. And that's why he says in verse 12 at the end, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Usually, this verse or these verses are read in a marriage union. You have the husband and the wife-to-be standing together, and they are just about to enter into a, a marital relationship. They're going to begin new life together as a husband and wife. And uh, usually the advice that they receive from the one who officiates the marriage and is usually using this expression, two are better than one. You need one another. You need one another in your marriage. You need to work to walk, to warm and to withstand together Two are better than one, but he will never stop there because he will always add this final portion of verse 12 where he will say a threefold cord is not easily broken. And the question, of course, may rise, who is that third person? Who is that third person? that will assist in a marriage union? Who is that third person that will assist in, a, in a harmony among God's people? Who is that person? Well, of course we know. Because Shlomo did not know yet about Yeshua, Jesus, the way you and I know of him today. He was speaking about the God of Israel. We need God in our lives. You and I who are believers in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, now, after when the church is born already, we know that God the Son became a man, and He is the one that wants to be the center in our lives. Three is even better than two. And the third person in the context here is the person of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. He wants to be the center of In the lives of God's people, beloved brothers and sisters, he is the one that wants to be the object in the life of God's uh, people. How wonderful it is to see this, beloved brothers and sisters. I want to read a a verse in uh, Matthew chapter 18. In Matthew chapter 18, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, promised to be in the midst of his own people. You remember what we read? is one of the most beautiful verses in the scripture that Yeshua spoke even before the church was born. He was saying to his disciples, and he said to them in Matthew 18 and verse 20, he's saying to them uh, this important fact. He says to them uh, uh, in verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name or unto my name, he promised to be in the midst. There am I in the midst of them. The Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, want to be in the midst. 
in the midst of a marriage relationship, in the midst of the, the family, in the midst of the assembly, in the midst of the congregation, in the midst of friendship. You want to be the center. Why? Because the threefold cord is not easily broken. We will be able to uh, uh, work, walk, warm, and we stand together when a threefold cord, when the third person, the name, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, will be in the center of God's uh, people. One more verse in Hebrews chapter 13. And there we read, beloved brothers and sisters, in, uh, in, in, uh, in relationship to, to marriage, he said, marriage is honorable in all. And then he continued and he said to them at the end of verse 5, Be content with such things as ye have. For he said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. The Hebrew author is quoting what God said to Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, that God promised, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. God promised to be in the midst of his own people. Why? Because the threefold cord is not easily broken. And as we have fellowship with the Lord and with one another, we can enjoy, beloved brothers and sisters, the strength that he gives God's people along the way. So, Shlomo, Throughout uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, a uh, Kohelet, a uh, uh, chapter four, he presents before us these uh, three sad things that he observed here in this world. There is a sad oppression that happening under the sun, verses one, two, and three. There is a sad envying that is happening here in this world under the sun in verses four, five, and six. And there is a sad isolation and separation that happened here under the sun here in this world. And therefore, he is encouraging Israel in the context, you and I today as we are listening to this message, to seek to be a blessing to one another, to recognize that we need to be, to have harmony, and unity based upon God's word, based on God's word, and to have God as the center of our life, to have God, the Son, the Messiah, Yeshua, as the center of our life. Why? Because threefold cord is not quickly broken. And so he concludes in the, the fourth chapter, beloved brothers and sisters, verse 13, 14, 15, and 16, and Shlomo gives advice. In light of these sad things that are going here in this world under the sun, the oppression, the envying, the separation and division, in light of all this, here is my counsel to you, Israel. Here is my counsel to you and I today. We have this counsel in verses 13, 14, 15, and 16. Here is the advice in light of these. Here is the advice. It is better to be poor. But wise child, rather than to be old and foolish king who will not receive any advice. This is verse 13. Better is a poor and a wise child uh, than an old and a foolish king. You might not be a king. You might not have position and possession here in this world. It is far better to be a uh, as it says here, a poor but a wise child than an old foolish king that will not be admonished. Because the one who will, do, will not take the, the admonishing, the counsel of God, will find himself unwise, foolish. That's why remember at the end of the chapter, we have already emphasized a few times, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. Why? Because you are going to get all things will not remain the same. Be wise even from your youth by remembering who you belong to. In verse 14, the poor young wise person is able to rise to be a king. Notice what he says. In verse 14, for out of prison, in other words, out of poverty, 
He, this is the young child, comes to reign where is also he is that is born in his kingdom uh, becomes poor. In other words, what he's really saying that he that is remind us of Joseph, who was a poor child who was taken to Egypt and he rose out of prison. Perhaps this is exactly what uh, Shlomo had in mind, looking back at the history of Israel in Genesis 41, how eventually the poor Yosef become second to the king of Egypt. Because God was with him. Thirdly, in verse 15, Shlomo is uh, consider all the living now and the children that will come after them. Notice what he is considering. He's looking around and he's, again, he's using the word consider. I consider all the living which walk under the sun now. And then with the second child that shall stand up in his stead. In other words, he's looking at the new generation. The generation that is now and the generation that is to come. And what does he see? According to verse 16, he says, There is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this is also vanity and vexation of spirit. In other words, there will be no end to the way which the new generation will uh, come under if they turn away from the Lord and if they are going to set God aside away from their life. So in other words, what he's saying to them, uh, what he's saying to us eventually at the end of this chapter 4, seek, seek to please God only in your life. Don't neglect to seek to live for God here in this world. And remember that even though there is sad oppression here under the sun, even though that there is sad envying and, and friction under the sun, even so there is sad isolation and separation under the sun, take my counsel. Seek to live for God. Seek to please God because he will ultimately produce in your life joy. Seek to be a blessing to the people of God. That's what he's saying uh, here in this so, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4 and verses uh, uh, 7 uh, to 16. So, just to conclude, in chapter uh, Psalm 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard of Aaron's beard and went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew of the descendants upon the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forever more. God commandeth blessing. Sham tziva Adonai et habracha chayim ad olam. There the Lord commandeth his blessing, even life, forevermore. So beloved brothers and sisters, as we conclude with this fourth chapter, what an encouragement it is for all, for all of us to seek to have the mind of the Lord, to recognize that even though these oppressions and envying and separation here in this world, we as believers are called to have, to remember our Creator here and to walk with Him, take Him in our life. And when we go astray and when we, when we fail God, when we fail the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, let us seek to encourage one another, to build one another, to edify one another. And if someone is full, let us lift him or her up and restore them to a right fellowship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah. That's how the Lord can bless us until he will take us home to be with him in glory. There, there will no longer be divisions, no oppression, no separation, no envying, 
but we will all enjoy the presence of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, who will be the one that will bless his own people. What a wonderful thought we have here from Ecclesiastes chapter 4. So may the Lord bless his word and encourage your heart. And so we will close in prayer and we will say Shabbat Shalom. So Abba, our Father, thank you for the lessons that we learned from the book of Kohelet. Thank you that uh, Shlomo gave this counsel to Israel and to us all. Bless your word, we pray, for we ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, my dear friend. God bless you. Shalom, Shalom.